Dub C here, and we're back with another Survival Saturday. I got a lot of awesome stuff planned. I'll be working on the shelter, hopefully getting the roof done. While I'm out here, I always like to review some gear. So first off, I know it's getting a little colder out. It's getting the fall time, so it's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to dip to about 32 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. Now, that's okay, because one of the items I'm reviewing should help with that. So I got the Teton Sports sleeping bag. It's rated for negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 32 degrees Celsius. And it's XL. I'm really excited to check this out. It's kind of an overkill for right now, I know. But I still want to know how to use it, so when I do cold camping, I'm ready to go. I really like the backpack, so I'm really excited to de demo this out. Now, also tonight, I'll be working on some char cloth and some char wood. I've never done that before, but I want to learn, and I want to see if I can kind of make some up for my tender bag. So I got my tin, some piece of cotton, I got to find some punk wood, and we'll try that out. Another item I'm reviewing is the survival, uh, Southern Survival Paracord. It's glow in the dark, has reflective. I'm gonna be doing some night tests on that, so really excited for that. And you don't wanna miss the Philly Steak and Cheese Keto meal I can make tomorrow, which also can be non-keto, if you just wanna put it on a bun or a keto wrap. But losing daylight as it is, so I gotta get to it. So let's get started. So I'm back in the shelter. That's why I'm gonna be sleeping tonight. I got the Southern Survival as my ground cover again. So I got this tarp set up right here. And then I got the thermos pad, and now I'm going to open up the sleeping bag, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so this is the, the tag right here. It's a Celsius XL, negative 32 degrees Celsius, 25, negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit, right zip. It's got like a little sample of the fabric. It's got the handle right here. You can hook it up to something. This is apparently the bag you stuff it in because you don't roll it up, but I want to see if I can get it smaller than this. So on the top, we have the buckles, and it's got the one buckle right here. These are pretty strong buckles. Uh, from what I see in the backpack, they, they're, you know, I put them through a lot and they seem to be fine. We got the little zip line, pop that open and then we'll see what we got. So we got the normal standard pouch that you get in the sleeping bag. This thing is kind of rolled up, but it's a monster. I'll show more of it after a kind of test to overnight. Okay, so we got it out. And it is kind of rolled up nice and tight. Just roll it out. It's kind of like stuffed in there. It's got the right zip. So the zipper is really good construction. So again, knowing from the uh, the backpack, the zippers have been working great. So hopefully it's the same construction. The material, real thick. It's kind of light uh, padding. And it opens up. And this is actually the front. It's got the cool logo around the front there. And then it's got like a hoodie type deal here where you actually can just almost works as a pillow, but you can tighten it too. So when you get in, never seen that before, you can tighten that around you to stay warm as well as the insulator. So that's something new that I'm not used to. So I'll be checking that out for sure, but definitely keep you warm. It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but uh, we'll get a picture of it. One more cool thing I did want to show is there's like a Velcro and uh, kind of open it up and you can Velcro it so you get the full kind of like wrap around deal. So that's really cool. Okay, I'll talk more about the sleeping bag after I sleep in it uh, overnight and kind of, kind of review the features and see how well it works. But we got to get a fire going. So one cool thing is actually I picked this, uh, I got a tinder bag now. So I found this on Amazon. Uh, I'll put the link down below if you want to check it out. But it's a really nice tinder bag. It's nothing special. But uh, I've been passing a lot of stuff and I actually found a bird's nest that I got stuffed in here for another time. And then I'm going to put some more uh, birch bark and some other items in here so I can get a fire going. So really cool. And it cinches up real nice. And I think it was relatively cheap, but definitely want to have this in the backpack. So if I see any more bird's nests or any other good tender, I want to pick it up. All right, time to get a fire going so I can start making some char cloths and some char wood. There we go. And once I get a good fire going, I can throw this uh, tin on there. And then hoping that uh, take, I'm going to cut some more uh, cotton cloth up and we'll set it on there and hopefully make some good uh, char cloth. We got a nice fire going. So got my tin. I put some um, pieces of cotton cloth in there and now I'm going to set it on the fire and it should take about 15 minutes. Or maybe a little longer. 
I got it cooking on there. I'm going to say another about 10 minutes or so, and then I'll pull it off, let it cool down, and we'll check out and see if we got uh, char cloth. All right, I retrieved my tin out of the fire. Got my headlamp on so you can see a little bit better. And we got these little pieces of cloth in here. And I want to see if they are actually char cloth. They look like it. We're supposed to take one and they're supposed to rip real easy. Yep, if that works out. The other test would be to throw some spark on it and see if it actually embers. Okay, I have a piece of my sample char cloth that I just made. I want to see if it um, embers up if I throw spark on it. One strike. Look at that. You could easily make a fire with that. So, char cloth definitely works. Going to be making some more up. I'm going to store this away and then make some more, and then I'm going to try making some with uh, some char wood with the punk wood that if, uh, if I can find some. Okay, we got our char cloth saved up in the bag. I'm going to make some more up, but I'm going to seal this way. I heard it takes longer to make the char wood. So I went in the woods and I found some punk wood. And punk wood's just real soft, almost like styrofoam or foam. We're going to put that in the tin and like I said, I believe it takes longer. So we're going to put that in the fire and uh, see how long it takes. I think it probably would be overnight, but I'm not sure. It's all about learning. So we'll get some of this in the tin, place it in the tin, in the fire, and see what we get. We got the tin packed full. Close it up, and it should have the same principle as the char cloth after it's done. You'll be able to throw a spark on it, get a nice ember, but I'll probably use this for next Survival Saturday's fire start. Get to enjoy a moment of the fire, and we'll throw the tin on. Let's throw it down here in the coals, and use a stick to move it around, get in position, just let it cook. Okay, it's time for the night demonstration of the Southern Survival 550 paracord. I did a ter terrible job unwinding it. Um, but it is supposed to be just a natural 550 paracord, I believe seven strand. It's supposed to be glow in the dark and have the reflective properties. So I marked off a little trail. Let's see if we can uh, walk it. Okay, I'm using the Glowco headlamp that I got from the Battle Box. If you look over here, it's a little bit harder to pick up. There is the first strand, and it's very reflective, very easy to see. Um, as far as glow in the dark, though, if you turn the light off, you're not going to see it. When we get closer, See the reflective strand. We'll turn it off to see if it's glow in the dark at all. Even charging it with the light a little bit. And I do not see it. It's very faint. Uh, maybe if you drop the whole thing, it could be glow in the dark. But And then, I don't know if I can show the rest. The camera's not picking up as good as you can actually see it. Okay, to show this best, I actually turned on the uh, camera light. But you can see the reflective you know, strand right there, and then the next one right behind it. And then if I start getting closer to the third one, or the farthest one, you can actually start seeing it. And I can try to point to it. But obviously that one's up here, right about there. And you have this one right here. And that one's uh, approximately about, I'd say even, maybe about 30 yards away. The one right there. So I give the reflective principles of this rope 10 out of 10. They work great, You'll only need a little bit of light, which suggests putting on items you may uh, don't want to lose, such as a ferro rod or a knife, because you'd easily be able to find it with a little bit of light. As far as the glow in the dark, I'll try to show that off, turn the light off in the camera, and it's very hard to pick up. If you charge it with a flashlight, it does work pretty good for a limited time, but it's not something I would count on, probably a three out of 10 for the glow in the dark, but the reflective works great. Okay, it's morning time, and it definitely got cold last night. So it's every every bit of 32 degrees right now. And I can tell you the, the sleeping bag performance worked great. I just gotta remember to bring my coat and warmer clothes. I'm so used to uh, warm weather camping that uh, didn't bring those. But inside the sleeping bag, it stays really warm. Another couple cool features it has, it's got these um, lines you can tighten and actually cinch this around you as far as the hood. And then the inner insulator, it's got the same thing where you can just pull that tight. So both these can be tightened around you. And this is like a hood right here. So you can actually enclose pretty well on it. And then on the side, it's got the little like Velcro after you zip up. One thing I noticed is zipping up, and it might be typical with all sleeping bags, 
zipping up on the sides is difficult. You know, it gets caught in the fabric a lot. Um, maybe like a guide in there would help a lot. But as far as the sleeping bag performance is great. Now I'm going to tend the fire and get some uh, coffee going. And I want to see how that char wood turned out. Coffee water's done, so I'll be pulling that off and then uh, we'll make some coffee and show that uh, char wood off. Okay, we're going to make some, we got some instant type 2, or actually type 3. Got some type 3. Get some fresh hot water. Nothing like coffee by the campfire. So out of the 10 I pulled out this morning, this is all I had of the char wood. So I put, I filled it up and it looks like it shrinks down quite a bit. So let's take a piece off and we'll see if we can actually get it to uh, get a good ember. And it does, it's kind of flaky so you got to be careful but I don't want to use the, I want to save a good piece. I want to make some more as well. But I'll take one of these smaller pieces like this and I'll try it out. So this should work exactly like the char cloth, and if I put a little spark to it, I should be able to get an ember and then create a fire from that ember. Here's my piece of char wood. We're gonna try to ignite this. Same thing as the char cloth. All right, so we add some spark to it. You see it's already embering up. And if I just... Oh, I lose it. But, has the same principles as the char cloth and uh, it actually has a nice big ember already. So we place that in a um, tender bundle and you're going to catch it. So being made char cloth and char wood. Time to get some shelter building in. I got the biggest tarp in the wall behind me. I'm going to start working on placing that. I want to make sure that I can place the tarp up before I finish the roof. So once I get this in, in place, uh, I'm going to dig a trench in the bottom with my line trawl. Uh, tactical shovel axe. I'm going to dig a trench, place the tarp inside it on the bottom, and then fasten it up with either zip ties, and then I'm going to hold off on the top because I want to have the top of the tarp fold in, and then I'm going to wrap the top tarp over that so there's no rain or moisture getting inside uh, during snowstorms or rain. So I'm going to get started. I got my tarp in place, um, kind of where I want it on the wall. Now I'm going to fill the dirt in the spot where I uh, dug the trench in. There's about six inches of material on the bottom, so it'll seal up on the bottom. Okay, I got the tarp um, all sealed up at the bottom with the dirt, and it worked out really well. Now I have to uh, secure the sides, and then my I'm not doing it yet, but once I get the roof on, I did a couple more supports on the roof, but I'm just getting a feel for how the tarp fits and how I want to do it. Uh, I want to secure it up here, and then bring it out, and that way it's underneath, because I'm going to do the big tarp over top everything, and that way it seals up all the walls uh, to secure it and make sure it's waterproof. But I'm getting really hungry, so it's time for those Philly cheesesteak wraps. It's time for some Philly cheesesteak wraps. So what I got is a half pound shaved steak. I've used ground turkey before, so that can be substituted. Um, got about a handful of mushrooms. I have a jalapeno, green pepper, and onion cut up here. About uh, half of a small green pepper, quarter of an onion, and then a full jalapeno. And like I said, you can take, if you don't like onions, don't put onions in it. If you don't like jalapenos, don't put green, you know, you can just mix and match. It's pretty, pretty simple. I have some banana peppers, hot banana peppers to top it. I have half a bar of cream cheese. And I'm going to be using two slices of smoke flavored provolone. Now, if you can find the more expensive kind or the ones in the deli, it's probably better. But this is all I could find short, short notice. And then uh, these are my cheese wraps. So these are what make it keto. Uh, per se, if you wanted to change this with either a sub bun or a tortilla wrap, it has carbs, it, then you had just have Philly cheesesteak out by the campfire. But I can use these cheese wraps, and these cheese wraps only have, they only have one gram of carb. Uh, but I will have the macros, I'll probably put them up right now. I will be using the extra virgin olive oil from Nintor Training Company and Haiti Spice, but 
we'll just uh, put some of the olive oil in the pan, get it warmed up, and then that way we can just get it everywhere. I usually about uh, about one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and that's included in the macros as well. I went ahead and heated up the olive oil, and then you want to get it on the high rise. If you're using a pan like this, you want to get it up on the sides so nothing sticks. And once you got that, then you can start adding. I usually add my veggies first. And that way you can put the meat on top. Well, that's the onion, the jalapeno, and the green pepper. And I like to sear those up pretty good. And then I take my shaved beef and put it right over top. And I am going to be using cooking the top today. And then I put the mushrooms on top. And that way you get a nice balance of flavor and it's kind of just cooking through. All right, time to give it a stir. So let's see what it looks like. You gotta use the gloves because it's gonna be hot. Sorry, cooking up real nice. Perfect time to stir it. The veggies are getting uh, flavored in there. Steak's getting cooked up nice. All right, a little bit longer. I had a little bit of Haiti spice to it. I'll give it another stir, see how it's looking. It's cooking perfectly. At this point, you want to start chopping up your veggies into your steak, getting your steak kind of separated. And just keep cooking it. And we're almost time to add our cheeses. All right, let's see if it's ready for the cheese. Meat looks all cooked up, smells fantastic. Onions, green peppers, jalapenos, all coming together. Lots of flavor. Put on that Haiti spice. I'll add the uh, cream cheese next. So I just take the whole block of cream cheese like this and I just squish it in. I'm going to add the cheese and I just squeeze it into the whole thing. We'll add some heat to it to uh, help it mix in. And then I add two slices of provolone. I said the other ones, older, like aged, is better. The smoked provolone for sure for that Philly cheesesteak flavor. Once you get this added back on, we'll add the lid back on and put it back over the fire, warm it up, and then we'll give it a good mix. And that's where we get the, the cheese melted in. Let's take a look at it with the cheese melted a little bit. So the cheese just melted right into it. Now we just gotta smash this cream cheese and start mixing it all around. It's probably the hardest part, but that's where you get that creamy Philly cheesesteak. And provolone just add that flavor. The cream cheese is a keto helper too, but it's nothing like quick and easy Philly cheesesteak. So it's already coming together. It's all about just letting it melt. We're gonna add a little more Haiti spice to it and put it back on the fire for just a little bit longer. This is the finished product. So we got the, everything just mixed up. The cheese just blended perfectly with steak, onions, the mushrooms, green pepper, and the jalapeno. Let's just get a bite by itself before the wrap. Man, that is fantastic by itself. The green peppers, the onions all got cooked up. They're not hard. There's a little bit crunch of green pepper, a little bit crunch of the jalapeno. The Haiti spice give that a little zest. Jalapeno gives it a little kick. It's just a wonderful flavor out here. Now we're going to try one of these cheese wraps. Give us a mega wrap, like a mega bite. So I'm just going to leave it in the little paper thing because it is kind of melted, but it's like a little big piece of cheese. Let's throw our filling in there, just like this. And we're going to add the banana peppers. Have us a Philly cheesesteak wrap. These are perfect. I always love these on the subs like this. All right, 
the paper off. Hopefully it doesn't melt my cheese wrap. It's a little warm. That's okay. It's going for that mega bite. All right, this is absolutely amazing. It did melt my little cheese wrap a little bit. That's okay. The banana peppers bring out the flavor. Just amazing. The zest of the banana pepper. It's Philly cheesesteak. Can't go wrong with that. It's awesome. But now it's time to get to final thoughts. So final thoughts on the overnight and the gear reviewed and everything I did. Man, it was, it was a great time. Starting off with the Teton Sports. I got to compress a little bit. This is the XL negative 25 degree Fahrenheit, negative 32 degree Celsius sleeping bag. Do I think it can handle the cold temperatures? Absolutely. Is it a little bulky? Yeah, but worth it for the extreme cold. And the other thing I'd say is uh, just a quick con is the zipper, but that might be on all sleeping bags. When I'm trying to zip it up, it gets caught up. But overall, great sleeping bag. I'm really excited. I'm seriously going to find a, like I do some tarp camping when the winter time in the snow, and I'll be using this to see how well it works. That, then I can get a true test out of it. Now, the survival, Southern Survival 550 Paracord. Glow in the dark, reflective. Now, as far as glow in the dark, I'm not going to give it much credit. I mean, if you charge it up, it might hold up pretty good. But the reflective properties are awesome. And I'm going to save this for marking, for trail marking, and using it on items I don't want to lose. Because a little bit of light goes a long ways. A lot of the um, hammocks and, and uh, tents are coming with the same line now. And it's, it's just great to have if you got a flashlight. Now, I also got to make some char cloth and char wood. This was my first time making it. It was easy. Hopefully, uh, you know, put it in my tender bag and I'll come in use when I need it. I'm going to use this, uh, one of these, to start up my fire for next Survival Saturday. And then we'll talk about my favorite part. The favorite part was the Philly cheesesteak wraps. It's really nice to come out here and really nice to be outside. And then you have a great meal like that. That tops it off perfectly. Now I'm making, still making good progress on the shelter. Still kicking butt on that. That's almost done. I got the one wall tarped up. I got more of the roof done. Hope to continue to progress on it. But I'm absolutely having a great time out here. And that's all I can ask for. So that's all I got now. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.